good morning to you uh, we will now continue with the constitution in the last class as you know we have seen article 74 which explain how the executive powers of the union are exercised we have seen that the council of ministers is headed by the prime minister who is the real executive and executive powers are exercised by president on the advice of the council of ministers and president of india is only a nominal head etc today we will see how this council of ministers is formed formation of council of ministers formation of council of ministers that is what is explained in article 75 every word in the article 75 is crucial potential examination point what does article 75 says president appoints the prime minister on his advice the other ministers ministers who hold their office during the pressure of president council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha before a man, minister enters his office president will administer oath of office and secrecy according to the format given in the third schedule remember third schedule a minister who is not a member of either house of parliament can be appointed as minister only for 6 months within which period he should get elected as member of either house of parliament failing which he will lose the ministership the salary and allowances shall be as decided by parliament by law until then it is given in the second schedule most importantly remember the 91st amendment act 2003 added a new proviso restricting the strength of council of ministers to 15 percentage of the strength of lok sabha and also it has stipulated that any member of parliament disqualified under anti defection law schedule 10 cannot become minister and cannot also hold any remunerative political post for the remainder of the term or till he gets a seat in the house whichever is earlier this is what article 75 says so what does it say first president appoints the prime minister and on his advice the other ministers so appointing authority for the for the prime minister is president of india and other ministers are appointed by president of india and the advice of the prime minister president appoints the prime minister and on his advice the other ministers remember we have seen in the entire constitution you will see executive powers of the president legislative powers of the president the ordinance making powers of the president the pardoning powers of the president the emergency powers of the president all the powers you will see plenty of powers but the entire constitution you will not find the powers of the prime minister you cannot find you cannot there is no power given to the prime minister under the con you search all the 395 articles no powers have been given to the prime minister duties have been given remember there is constitutional duties attached to the prime minister towards the president article 78 that we will come later no powers have been given to the prime minister under the constitution the only power if at all enjoyed by the prime minister is this is the power president appoints the prime minister and on his advice the other ministers his advice other ministers that is the crucial by using his advice the other minister president appoints the prime minister and on his advice 
the other ministers prime minister appoints whomsoever he likes all the confident people whomsoever he shuffles and reshuffles the cabinet political rival internal party rival keep him in a very you know a portfolio give him very harmless portfolio keep important portfolios with you with the prime minister cbi enforcement directorate ib all the which are very sensitive keep him keep a control over that so president appoints the prime minister and on his advice the other ministers because the other ministers are to be appointed only on the advice of the prime minister so president appoints the prime minister and on his advice other ministers ministers hold their office during the pleasure of the president remember see how the check and balance works ministers hold their office during the pleasure of the president and the council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha see the council of ministers as a team is responsible to lok sabha whereas the ministers who hold their office during the pleasure of the president what does it imply remember the if the president does not like a minister he can remove him absolutely no uh, uh, i mean question i mean he can always remove because ministers hold their office during the pleasure of the president they are not at the disposal of the parliament ministers who hold their office during the pleasure of the president but remember there was a case you perhaps you, you can remember see there was one minister i do not want to mention he had alleged in the parliament that uh, the president of india has some link then president has some link with some terrorist organization and that president of india was harboring some terrorist organization people in the rashtrapati bhavan president got furious how can this minister uh, can say like this and that minister was very close to prime minister so he, i mean prime minister will not remove him so president of india got very furious and he what because the powers are there ministers hold their office during the pleasure of the president so the president of india has every power to remove the individual ministers so he wanted to remove him then he consulted attorney general attorney general advised him don't do it why because that minister is close to the prime minister if you remove him now tomorrow the same prime minister will ask the same person to be reappointed as minister and president is to appoint him as minister why president appoints the prime minister and on his advice the other ministers ministers hold their office during the pleasure of the president during the pleasure of the president so during the pleasure of the president that does not mean unilaterally you can remove him because you will lose the face if the prime minister is making the president asking the president to appoint the same fellow of whom he has removed then you have to appoint him then it would be a loss of face so this is the reason check and balance ministers hold their office during the pleasure of the president but the council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha remember when they are when the when the ministers are appointed how it is formed how the formation of the council of ministers is done prime minister is appointed by the president okay remember before appointment as president that person is elected by the largest party so selection of the prime minister comes first from the party then the formally the president is appointing him as the prime minister so party elects him first selection is first appointment as prime minister is second then it is the prerogative of the prime minister to uh, you know appoint anybody he likes as minister you know as far as formation of council of ministers concerned normally i am talking about the normal situation normally it should be characterized by the political homogeneity all should be together no difference of opinion everybody should be i mean same ideology but 
nevertheless there are occasions where this was not followed at least in the early stages for example prime minister nehru included in his cabinet leading non congress persons like shanmugam chetty who had intimate relationship with justice party dr b r ambedkar a leader of the depressed classes who had severe difference of opinion with the congress because congress was supposed to be anti dalit dr s p mukherjee a man of alleged hindu communalist disposition by virtue of his proximity to hindu mahasabha he was a, made as a minister john mathai who was an advocate of free enterprise who had a severe difference of opinion with the congress party he was made a minister not only that subsequently also nehru continued with the non congress people cd deshmukh you know governor of rbi and he was minister he resigned similarly you know my mc chagla he was minister for some time so it depends upon it is a it is a prerogative of the prime minister whom so ever he likes he can appoint him as a minister absolutely there is no question of anything but and fourthly what did i what did i say number 1 president appoint the prime minister and his advice the other ministers ministers hold their office during the pressure of the president and the council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha this we will come later and a person who is not a member of either house of parliament can also be appointed as minister but he is within 6 months he should him get himself elected to either house of parliament failing which he will lose the ministership so any person can be appointed as the minister there is no bar and in fact as prime minister also rajiv gandhi any person can be appointed as prime minister also there is no bar that he should be a member of parliament no any person because mini- prime minister is not different from a minister prime minister is first among the equal so prime minister is the minister also so any person this class applies to prime minister also any person who is not a member of either house of parliament can also be appointed as minister or prime minister the only condition is within 6 months he should get himself elected in either house of parliament failing which he will lose the ministership mrs indira gandhi and normally the prime minister should belong to the what is called lok sabha normally but there are exceptions mrs indira gandhi himself herself was not a member of lok sabha 1966 similarly deva gowda he was not a member of lok sabha ik gujral he was not a member of lok sabha dr manmohan singh he, he was not a member of lok sabha normally because the council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha naturally prime minister being the head of the council of ministers should belong to lok sabha in uk still it is maintained except only one salisbury i think mr salisbury except he belonged to house of lords that was the last after that there was no no such person everybody belonged to the house of commons so any person who is not a member of either house can be appointed as minister or prime minister then within 6 months he should get himself elected to either house of parliament failing which he will lose the ministership it was challenged in the supreme court when rajiv gandhi was appointed it was challenged in the supreme court a person who was not a uh, member of parliament has been invited because the circumstances were like that suddenly mrs gandhi was assassinated and he was no- nowhere normally what should have happened is the senior most minister will become the uh, caretaker uh, prime minister and the congress party will uh, elect a person and that will be recommended to the president of india and he will call that person and the, he will be sworn in as the prime minister but on that occasion what happened mrs gandhi assassinated so there should not be any gap so immediately the um, mrs jail singh called uh, rajiv gandhi and he was uh, sworn in and subsequently he was unanimously elected by the congress party as the leader of the uh, leader of the house and he was uh, he became the prime minister that is how so it is not necessary that it was challenged in the court of law 
he was not a member of uh, parliament how he can be say, uh, but uh, it was upheld by the supreme court saying any person he is not the prime minister for this purpose he is a minister so any person who is not a member of either house of parliament can be appointed as a, a minister and within 6 months he should become the mini- become the member of either house of parliament and he will automatically become i failing which he will lose the ministership so number one point remember another point it remember is this provision has given the powers to president to appoint anyone he likes anyone he likes to be appointed as the prime minister so counts how they treats president appoints the prime minister on his advice the other ministers ministers hold their office during the pressure of the president council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha so th- that is the crucial word a pr- there is no specific method the president of india follow only the first the largest party these are all conventions largest he should call the leader of the largest party then he go to the next one third he will go to the next one if there is a fractured verdict these are all the discretions and the conventions given to the president of india the only thing president should satisfy himself is the person whom he chooses to head the government should enjoy the confidence of lok sabha that's all that's all if the president fails in his assessment then of course he will be defeated on the floor of the house watch why after 13 days he was defeated on the floor of the house so it is there is no hard and fast these are all conventions it these are all conventions and they uh, calling the largest party leader etc the president of india should satisfy himself that the person whom he invites to be sworn in as the prime minister should command confidence of lok sabha that's all lok sabha not even not rajya sabha lok sabha if he is confident if he has satisfied himself that the person whom he invites to be to take over as prime minister is enjoying the confidence of lok sabha then the president of india is free to call any one to lead the government that's all that is the total discretion of the president of india that is that only discretion if the party is the, like mr modi if the party has thumping majority then there is no question of any discretion for the uh, uh, president of india he will call only the leader of the party elected by the majority party he will be sworn in as the prime minister so question does not come and second point you should remember is the discretion of the president or the governor equally applicable to governor also it does not mean that he can appoint anybody for instance i will give you, perhaps you remember 2001 mrs jailalitha was d enfranchised by supreme court said she was convicted for an offence which for which the imprisonment was more than 3 2 years so election commission has disqualified her the election commission has disqualified her she resigned from the chief ministership and i think if i am not wrong op panir selvam was made the uh, chief minister as a temporary measure and what they did is what the pop, legislature party of the aimk did is they reelected mrs uh, miss jayalalitha as the chief minister and governor was asked to, to uh, uh, give oath to mrs uh, miss jayalalitha governor accordingly administered oath of office this was challenged in the supreme court remember this was challenged in the supreme court because the argument was this is the they have the majority the, the she was sworn in by the governor her appointment as cm was challenged in the supreme court supreme court nullified her appointment appointment you know what uh, supreme court stated it said that a non member who does not possess the qualification prescribed or who has been disqualified cannot be appointed as a chief minister or minister the mandate of the people is not supreme the will of the people can be respected only if it is as per the constitution if there is a clash between the mandate of the people and the constitution the constitution will prevail constitutionally pm can be member of either house of parliament remember so this is the case i cited because it is uh, any person can be appointed does not mean you will appoint a criminal you will appoint an insane person or you will appoint a handicapped person 
you he should be prima facie at the outset he should have been qualified to be a member of parliament then only he you can are simply because this provision is there so you will appoint a 16 year boy as the uh, minister no he should first to fulfill the qualifications attached to the member of parliament then only he can be appointed as the prime minister or minister so now read it president appoint the prime minister on his advice the other ministers ministers hold their office during the pleasure of the president and the council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha and a person who is not a member of either house of parliament can also be appointed as minister but he will get himself elected within 6 months failing which he will lose the ministership remember now tell me what do you mean by collective responsibility the council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha first implication the council of ministers is not responsible to rajya sabha why house of people house of people to whom the council of ministers should be responsible so no no confidence motion no no confidence motion can be moved in rajya sabha number 1 similarly no adjournment motion can be moved in rajya sabha thirdly no policy cut motion can be moved in rajya sabha fourthly no censure motion censure censure motion can be passed in rajya sabha so that does not mean the question is the council of ministers is collectively responsible to lok sabha what do you mean by collective responsibility very simple collective responsibility means the ministers The, the decision of the cabinet is joint decision whether you agree to the decision of the cabinet or not you have to sail with them you sail or sink together you cannot remain in the cabinet and express a different opinion outside or inside the parliament no you have once you have become the cabinet minister once a decision has been taken by the cabinet the decision is binding on you you have to sail or sink together you cannot differ from the decision of the cabinet suppose you disagree yes you can resign if you disagree you can resign cd deshmukh resigned cd De- moradi desai resigned and uh, there are many ministers who resigned so it is the it is the decision of the uh, you know it is a cabinet decision it is binding on all it is binding on all so you sail or sink together together you go it is a joint decision that is why i told you the all the cabinet decisions are given judicial immunity because it is a collective decision every decision is binding on every minister every minister is expected to defend the decision of the cabinet both inside the parliament and outside the parliament if you disagree with any of the decision the only option open to you is quit don't remain here you resign and you differ away in on the streets of the uh, town there is no problem but remaining with you cannot have the cake and eat it too remaining within the cabinet and differ, expressing different opinion is not correct that is called collective responsibility which is the backbone of parliamentary form of government with this we will end we will continue with article 75 in the subsequent lecture thank you